Are you curious about the differences between the new PSVR 2 and the original PSVR? Look no further as I break down the key differences in this comprehensive comparison video. In this video, I'll be comparing the new PSVR 2 with the original PSVR, highlighting the major differences between the two. We'll take a look at the design, resolution, refresh rate, and the new features of the PSVR 2 and see how it stacks up against the original PSVR. We'll also discuss if the upgrade is worth it for the current PSVR users, so sit back, relax, and let's dive into the comparison. Hi, I'm David Loving, and you're watching Loving Tech Life. On this channel, I share my love of tech and gaming with tips, tutorials, and reviews based on my experiences. Welcome. The first important difference is a huge price hike between the PSVR 2 compared to the original PSVR headset. Many sources have reported how much more expensive the new headset is compared to the original. Hold on, is it really more expensive? Let's take a closer look. Most people are comparing the PSVR 2 launch price of $550 US to the original PSVR launch price of $400 US for the base package. So at a casual glance, the PSVR 2 is clearly more expensive. However, the $400 base package didn't come with the PlayStation camera that is required for positional tracking or the PlayStation Move controllers that are required for many of the headsets games. The camera had a recommended retail price of $60 and the Move controllers were $50 each. That brought the PSVR to a total of $560 if these were purchased separately, which is more expensive than the PSVR 2. You could have bought the whole kit in a bundle for $500 in 2016, which is marginally cheaper than the PSVR 2, but then with inflation, $500 in 2016 money is now over $600. So in reality, the PSVR 2 is not a huge price hike over the original PSVR, and it's poor reporting to say otherwise. The second important difference is the ease of use and setup with a simple single cable setup for the PSVR 2. The original PSVR setup was a complicated effort to say the least that involved a breakout box, connections to power, USB, HDMI, and a separate camera. With the PSVR 2, it's just one simple USB-C cable for everything that goes straight into the PlayStation 5. The third difference is the screen resolution and clarity. The original PSVR was known for its fuzzy image and the appearance of the screen door effect, which will be a distant memory with the new PSVR 2's higher resolution displays. To give you some idea of the improvement, the original headset had a per eye resolution of 960 by 1080, and the PSVR 2 has a vastly improved 2000 by 2040 pixel per eye. Sony themselves are reporting that the PSVR was a 1080p headset versus the PSVR 2 being a 4K headset or one megapixel versus four megapixel. However, those more familiar with VR would recommend using the measurement of pixel per degree or PPD as the best way of reporting headset clarity. You get this by dividing the horizontal resolution per eye by the field of view. So the PSVR 2 has a PPD of around 18, 2000 divided by 110, and the original PSVR has a PPD of around nine, so 960 divided by 100, which places the PSVR 2 next to some of the top of the line commercial VR headsets available today. While on the subject of the display, the fourth major difference between the two is that the PSVR 2 has an OLED high dynamic range display versus the OLED displays of the original. HDR is not only a differentiator when comparing the PSVR 2 to the original, it also sets it apart from all other VR headsets out there as it's the first commercially available VR headset to launch with an HDR display. This has the potential to provide better colors and black levels and will be able to produce scenes with lifelike brightness, which could improve immersion considerably. The fifth difference is the aforementioned field of view itself. 100 degrees to 110 degrees isn't a huge leap, but a lower field of view really sucks in VR. It gives you the impression you're looking through eye holes in a mask or ski goggles. The sixth difference I'll talk about here is the addition of IPD adjustment to the PSVR 2 headset, which adjusts the lenses to the distance between your eyes. This was missing from the PSVR headset and is important for a number of reasons, including maximizing image quality and the immersion in the VR experience. Difference number seven involves a PS4 camera that you need for tracking. The PSVR 2 doesn't need another external peripheral plugged into the console as it has four inbuilt cameras for inside out tracking. That means that the cameras and the headset itself are used to track the player's head movements. The PSVR's camera was never designed for VR and suffered from poor accuracy and limited coverage, which the new setup should vastly improve upon. The eighth major difference is eye tracking. Again, 
this is another case where this not only separates the new headset from the PSVR, but also provides a feature which up until now was only on high-end enterprise headsets. To begin with, it might not be obvious why this would benefit a VR headset since the four headset cameras are already tracking the movement of the player's head, but it turns out that eye tracking can be a game changer in many ways and could open up a whole new world of gaming possibilities, including eye-based input, automatic user sign-in, realistic eye movements for multiplayer avatars, the list goes on. On the subject of eye tracking, the ninth difference is a major feature that eye tracking enables called foveated rendering. Since your eyes only see sharply in a small focused area, rendering scenes in high detail around your peripheral vision is a bit of a waste. Foveated rendering aims to get the most out of the PS5's computing power by tracking where your eyes are looking and only rendering those areas with the highest details and reducing the detail in the periphery where it's not noticed. One of the biggest improvements to the PSVR 2 are the new Sense controllers. PSVR 1 relied on outdated PS Move controllers that weren't very precise and also lacked thumbsticks, which made them awkward to use in some games. The PSVR 2 controllers are designed from the ground up for VR, unlike the PS Move controllers. The tenth difference is that like other inside out tracking headsets, the PSVR 2 Sense controllers are tracked by the headset's cameras. This increases the tracking coverage because users can now turn around without blocking the PS camera from seeing their move controllers and the quality of tracking is vastly improved. If you're getting value from this video, please go ahead and smash the like button below and comment below what feature you're most excited about and why. Number 11 is that the Sense controllers now have the typical input design on all other modern VR controllers. Having thumbsticks and two face buttons has become the de facto standard. Having the same layout as other controllers makes it easier for developers to port games to the PSVR 2. Number 12 is the advanced haptics and finger sensing on the Sense controllers. The haptic feedback which you may already have experienced in the PS5 DualSense controllers provides highly detailed vibrations depending on the situation in game, as well as the adaptive triggers that can change how each pull feels. The PSVR 2 controllers have a touch sensor which can detect when you're gripping the pad. This will allow you to make more natural gestures with your hands in game, allowing you to close your fist or hold out your palm depending on the context of your situation. Lucky number 13 is the PS5's 3D audio tech that will provide an immersive soundscape for players on the games that support it. 3D audio is a specialized audio technology that is used to allow listeners to pinpoint both the direction and distance of sound. The original PSVR games were designed for use with the PS4, which didn't have the new 3D audio. Number 14 is that the PSVR 2 headset includes head-mounted haptics, which is another first for commercially available headsets. That means, like the controllers, the headset itself will be able to shake in response to things happening in the virtual world. This leads us on to the 15th difference. The PSVR 2 should reduce the chances of VR motion sickness compared to the original PSVR headset. Research shows that headset haptics like this can reduce the lurching feeling that is sometimes felt when using VR. This combined with the significantly reduced latency when compared to the PSVR should go a long way to reducing cases of VR sickness. There are of course other factors such as the type of game and movement that can contribute to feeling sick, but at the very least, at a base level, the PSVR 2 goes a long way to help avoid this feeling. Difference number 16 is pass review and play space boundary. The original PSVR had no onboard cameras, which means it lacks any kind of pass through view, which allows you to look through the headset without taking it off and configure the headset's play space boundary. Due to the onboard cameras, the PSVR 2 will have pass through to allow players to walk anywhere within range of their cable and in any direction. While PSVR's tracking range was so small, it didn't make sense to have a virtual boundary. This is pretty important since you don't want to be smacking into the TV or furniture while in VR. The PSVR 2 has the ability to scan the shape of your room to automatically create a suitable play space boundary and you can then further customize it by tracing a line on the ground using the headset's pass through view. The 17th difference is a key component. While the PSVR had the power of the PS4 to realize the VR games for the headset and it was compatible with the PS5, it couldn't properly tap into the PS5's power. The PSVR 2 will be taking full advantage of the PS5 and all its advanced features. 
enabling faster loading times, lower latency, higher resolution VR games in HDR with smooth frame rates providing better immersion when compared to the original PSVR. The 18th difference was a bit of a downer when it was announced, but the PSVR 2 is not backwards compatible with the PSVR library. Developers need to provide upgrades and changes to the games to make them compatible since there are so many differences between the two headsets and the controllers. Many of these will in fact be free upgrades if you already own the PSVR game, while some will have a small fee to upgrade. There are others, however, that will require a separate purchase for a remade version of the game. The good news is that all the upgraded titles with upgraded visuals and PSVR 2 features will likely be the best version of these games out there, making the PSVR 2 a great headset for catching up on all the VR titles you may have missed over the years if, like me, you haven't been convinced until now to dive into VR tech. Lenses on headsets like the original PSVR and the Oculus Quest 2s fog up like a sauna when warm, humid exhalation hits the cool lenses causing a vision impairing disaster for many VR gamers. The good news is that there are tiny vents built into the PSVR 2 headset that allow better airflow inside the headset to rid yourself of that troublesome fog. Last but not least, the 20th difference between these two headsets are the PSVR 2 games that are being built from the ground up to take advantage of all the new features of the kit. Horizon Call of the Mountain being one of the first flagship big budget Sony first developed titles giving us a glimpse into the bright future that will be the PSVR 2 library. As to whether the upgrade from the original PSVR to the PSVR 2 is worth it, that will come down to the games. Like any new VR headset, it's ultimately only as good as the games that you can play on it. So if you want to look at all the original PSVR games that are currently confirmed as free upgrades for the PSVR 2, then click or tap the screen and I'll see you in the next one.